Natalia Sigmund is not your typical music teacher. Every child is born with a certain level of music aptitude. She somehow brings out the musician in all of her middle school students. Our job as a music teacher, as a musician, as a person, is to develop that aptitude to its fullest. But her musical journey did not begin in the U.S. Her training started at a very young age in Moscow. When I started learning music in Russia, I started when I was seven years old, and I, I had a full curriculum of subjects. My main instrument, which was piano, music theory, which is something that students here don't get into until they're in college. Uh, so I, I actually, for seven years, was studying a curriculum that would be similar to part of the curriculum that I was encountering at Temple University when I started taking classes there. While in college, Natalia began studying a music learning theory developed by Dr. Edwin Gordon, a theory that she uses in her classroom every day. Music learning theory describes the learning process, how children learn when they learn music. Music learning theory describes the learning of music as similar to lear learning of language, because language and music are both oral. One of the cliches could be that children need to know the lines and spaces, and they need to know that the first line in treble clef is E, and every good boy does fine, and that becomes very important in teaching music. However, that doesn't really teach music. It's similar to learning alphabet before being able to speak. So music learning theory explains how children learn and presents a teacher with a proper sequence that would take the child from music infancy to being a fully functioning musician, an independent musician. Ready, sing. Just the of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. The lines and spaces become secondary, and making music and understanding notation in terms of sound becomes most important. So vocabulary becomes most important. What does it sound like? Bum, bum, bum. Can you look at bum, bum, bum? And can the notes actually become alive? I got the rhythm in my head. I got the rhythm in my head. Ding dong. I got the rhythm in my head. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. We're going to add one more thing. Natalia also started the Music Makers Chorus as an after-school program. In the past four years, it has grown from 12 to 65 members and has enjoyed much success in regional competitions. What you saw today was a very intense rehearsal preparing us for a formal performance. And we've had a lot of success in the last two years. It all started with B101 Christmas Choir Competition. And this year we entered another contest, uh, New Jersey 101.5, and we won again. Music to me is like basically my life. Whenever I'm like feeling down or whenever I'm like out riding my bike or something, I'll start singing. And sometimes when we're taking a test, I'll start singing and people will be like, stop singing. And I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead and sell me out and I'll your ship Miss Sigmund has changed probably my, my whole life. I've had most opportunities because of her. If I don't have music, I'm just not me. I happen to have quite a few of the music makers in my class. And the looks on their faces just tell it all. I mean, it, it's, it's a love of music, it's a love with what they're doing, and it's obvious when you see them, it's it just obvious. There's anecdotal data, including the Mozart effect, that music can make you smarter. As a researcher, I see that it helps students in other areas, emotionally, 
socially, but I don't know whether it helps them in math, and I don't know whether it helps them in reading, but I know this for sure. If you are going to be in a rich environment where brain is making all kinds of connections, that, that just has to affect other areas. It has to affect the whole person. And if it affects the whole person, then it absolutely affects everything else.